I have been having a battle with the enemy, mm. and I'm recognizing that it's him. Mm. But when I go ahead and pray, believing that he's in me, I have no fear. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. So help her to realize that the enemy has been overcome already yes. through Christ. Huh? And you could simply reply, it is written, as Jesus you, did. <laughs> wow. So can we move on now to the most holy place? And there's two huge developments taking place in the most holy place, especially in the book of Leviticus. And you need to identify those two developments this morning for me. So please open your Bibles, make sure you've got someone to communicate with. We're looking at the Old Testament Day of Atonement. And there's two chapters in Leviticus, but the most useful one will probably be Leviticus chapter 16. So with your partners, go ahead and have a vigorous discussion because there's two really significant developments took place on the Day of Atonement, which now involves the Most Holy Place Ministry. I want you to identify what those two developments are. So turn to your partner or partners and uh, try and identify those two developments for me. Your partner's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Ask you, are you going to meet us over there? At yeah, 5:45. Yeah. 5:45. I was wondering what the time was. Yeah, okay. that, that's when the reservation is. Okay. We'll meet down, not not at the top. Downstairs. We'll meet down by the, okay. 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 Yes. Excellent. Diane will be with me. My son. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was going to. Shannon's been in here. Have you seen oh. her? Oh, I have seen her. She was yeah, sitting yeah, over she's here. Sitting, oh, she's was, still there. She, she's there. Anyway, yeah. she's. I disinvited her and the kids. Oh, you so disinvited sure you, them? Sure you talk to her. Why did you disinvite her? No, because the kids, the kids are. I told her she could come. She could get the, get somebody to watch the kids. Oh, because yeah, I understand. I, they, yeah, they, you know they're they're good. Yeah, yeah. but but they'll be. It's not quite the after, same. Yeah. After a half an hour, they're done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, Okay. Yeah, so Five forty-five. Yeah. Good. Okay. okay. Shall be done. Hmm. I was going to have you go to their tent. If, if you were, if you were going to meet us at our tent, I'd. No, I'll meet you over there. there. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I should have made myself crystal clear. Listen very carefully. I'm not... Listen carefully. I, I, I did not give you a clear question. I'm not wanting to hear about the goats. So leave the goats alone. <laughs> And there are two other developments on the Day of Atonement I want you to pick up on. Not counting the goats, okay? So leave the goats alone and look at the other developments taking place. There's two things that happens. 
was in there, he slotted a bull, sprinkled blood on there, as he said, he slotted a lamb, and sprinkled it over 60 feet. Is there two over there? Is he alive? I don't know. I'm reading, I'm looking. Oh, just <laughs> looking for some signs, okay. <laughs> Was there anybody in those days understood this when they went to the sanctuary? We went in such a big hurry this morning from oh. Central California oh. that we left our Bible at home. Oh, oh, oh you should through. have said, huh? Oh. But he has a question. I'll let you use mine for a minute. <laughs> Be careful, there's a lot of stuff in there that could fall out. So here's your chapter here. Yeah. forward to a, an intimate meal with us. I don't think they even got any messages yesterday. I'm going to cancel the San Jose group and just go back to Shadowbrook with the couple that we messed up with. I hope you've noticed that our focus on the sanctuary is a Christ-centred focus. So if you have deviated from that, then the ship has sailed and you're not on board. You've joined the woman in the wilderness. So I'm going to give you two more minutes to wrap this up. It's a Christ, and that's one of the reasons I'm not looking yet at the scapegoat. I, I want you to see what's going on in the sanctuary itself. That's a Christ-centered focus. Two minutes. Two minutes. Verse 11. What have you got there? The Aaron shall offer the bull of the sin offering for himself and make atonement for himself for his household and slaughtering the bull of the sin offering which is for himself. So he's Hang on, let me look at that again. All right, it's... It's not quite complete. You're halfway there. But then, but then it goes down. You might have another verse that has it all in. 14, 15. Let me just check here. So if you've got those verses together, you've got the whole picture. Yeah, and then culminated in verse 34, this is the day that the tomb will be made for you and cleanse you. Okay. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. There might actually be three things. I've just had a revelation. <laughs> You could condense it into two, but they might well be happy to accept three as well. So that's just giving you, I can't believe I've given you that clue, okay? And I'm on one more prophetic minute now to wrap up, please. Uh.
So who have who have you got covered in the work of the high priest? Who's who's he covering here? First of all, well, I mean, as as the high priest, he's acting as the type of Jesus. Yeah, but who is he covering here in the sacrifice? Well, so. in the first one, he's covering himself and and his family. All right, and you can bring that out, right? right? Okay, and, and then the second one is where he's atoning for Israel, which is make sure it's. The world. No, no, the world is not Israel. Okay, well. Be careful. Okay, so I mean, I mean, he's, he's, it's. But make sure that the corporate nature of this comes through. Okay. That's the unique thing on this day, right? Because the impurities of the sons of Israel because of their transgressions. Yes. Israel and then the perfect. third thing. Um, yeah, and then in uh, 30 it says this shall cleanse you and you shall be clean of all your sins. Now that's the same point again. Come on, there's a one thing you haven't mentioned yet. You've got two of the three. Oh. Third base again, dude. Darn it! <laughs> this is very important. So the priest who is anointed and ordained to serve as a priest mm. in his father's place shall make atonement. Make atonement for the holy sanctuary. And he shall make atonement for the tent of me and for the altar. He shall also make atonement Which for the Which one is this? Can we get that out of it? Oh, look at him. Such a practical guy. Just leave it on the chair there. So Thanks, the, the corporate atonement is really in verse 33. Yeah, you've got that, but yeah. there's one thing you've left out. It must come out. Come on, dude. Himself and his family. There's so many things we can say in this chapter. Verse 20. Verse 20. What is it? Verse 20. The offer shall live. He shall offer the life of no, before the offering of the life gift. When he finishes atoning for the holy place and the tent of meeting and the altar. Now don't race over that. That's the important part. Yes. So he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's atoning for the sanctuary. He's cleansing the sanctuary. Oh. Yeah. So he, he oh. 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 Okay. Listen carefully. There could be four. <laughs> But we are content with three. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> All right, listen carefully because our two guys up here who've done some, I want to give them uh, some affirmation here. They've done very well as a team, these two. And they talk it out, which is half the secret, isn't it? In this kind of study, if you're digging into the Word and you've got someone you can discuss it with, it helps to clarify your own ideas too. So I think you guys have got a handle on the three things now. So who's going to present here? I'm Ron Philip. Philip, are you going to do it? Okay, if you would stand up and, and face the... Mu I mean, face the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want you to take your time now and spell out the three developments that happened here involving the high priest in the sanctuary on the Day of Atonement. Okay, so as, as our foundation, uh, we're starting with verse 11, and it says that Aaron shall offer the bull of sin offering, which is for himself, yeah. okay. and make atonement for himself and for his household. Hang on, so we've got an atonement... For, first of all, the high priest and his household. We're treating that as one point, okay? Otherwise we'd end up with four, much to the delight of some people here, okay? Alright, so we do have 
an atonement for the high priest and his household. That was verse 11. 11. Okay, verse 11. All right, and now the second thing happening. And then the second thing is then he's going to slaughter a goat of the sin offering, which is for the people, and bring its blood inside of the veil and do with it its blood as he did with it. We're not sure where you're reading from here. Verse 15. This could be the book of Philip. Okay. Well, verse 15. Okay. Let's hear it again, please. Read it to us. Verse 15. Then he shall slaughter the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people, and bring its blood inside the veil, and do with its blood as he did with the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and in front of the mercy seat. Okay. So he's... Now the, the sacrifice is the atonement for the people. So he's done it for himself and for his household. And so now he's ministering to the people. This is the people of God now, yes. Okay. All the people of God here. Okay. And it's the, for the corporate transgressions and the impurities of Israel. And it's for the entire nation of Israel. Were you reading then or was that... Phillips, uh, verse, verse 16, and he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the impurities of the sons of Israel and because of their transgressions in regard to all their sins, and thus he shall do... All right, so you've moved into the third arena now, huh? You've opened the door for the third point to come through. Read 16 again, and maybe you can add another verse to that. Uh. And he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the impurities of the sons of Israel and because of their transgressions in regard to all their sins, and thus he shall do for the tent of meeting, which abides with them in the midst of their impurities. Verse 20, when he finishes atoning for the holy place, and the tent of meeting, and the altar, he shall offer the live goat. Okay, so we have, first of all, an atonement for the high priest and his household. Then we have an atonement for the total people of God. And thirdly, we have atonement for? The sanctuary. Now be careful when you say the whole sanctuary you mean the, the, holy, place. the holy place. Yes there's an atonement for the holy place. Read that verse 16 again. That was a good verse. Yes. And he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the impurities of the sons of Israel and because of their transgressions in regard to all their sins and thus he shall do for the tent of meeting which abides with them in the midst of their impurities. Wow. Wow. Oh. Three very significant developments on the Day of Atonement. Atonement for the High Priest and his household. Atonement for the whole camp of Israel. And an atonement for the holy place. Question, yes. Who was that? Here. The NIV says the most holy place. The most holy place. Yes, it's not really a good. Uh, is the is the word most in parenthesis? Uh, no. It's, oh. it's a sense. What uh, what translation are you reading there? NIV. Oh, the NIV. Okay, we'll pray for you then. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> You know, the NIV is what we call a thought-for-thought thought translation. A thought-for-thought. Thought. It takes a whole thought and it tries to bring the whole thought over into English. But if you get a word-for-word word translation, you at least have the assurance that... That's why I use the New American Standard, because every word of the original is brought over into the English. And so that's where you will pick up the distinction here. Hell, just hang on a moment. She's daring. This is important. Okay. Truly. Listen. Um, I dare say in, in verse 33, there's a whole list of them. Yeah. More than four even. Yes, yes. And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation, yes. and for the altar, and he shall make atonement for the priests, and for all yeah. the people of the congregation. So he's gone back over it again, basically. Yeah. It's a restatement. It's a re no, but we've covered everything in there. Okay. That's a restatement. And the tabernacle of the congregation, a reference to which part of the sanctuary? The holy place. The holy place. Yes, it's a reference to the holy place. There was no need, by the way. This is very important. Listen carefully. There was no need 
for a cleansing of the most holy. Because the most holy place had nothing to do with the record of sin. It's the presence of God in the most holy place. That's how we know basically that it's a reference to the holy place. That's just a little help for clarification. You know, the, the most holy is the very place of God's location. But the cleansing that's going on is associated with the daily activity that's been going on in the sanctuary, which is in the holy place, the place of daily ministration. But I appreciate this clarification that just came through back here, but we have covered all those bases in the three statements we've got here. So there is a cleansing and atonement for the high priest and his household. There is an atonement for the whole camp of Israel. There is definitely a corporate factor here. Let that sink in. There is a corporate factor on the Day of Atonement. Every day it's been very much an individual activity. Bringing your offering, placing your hands on its head, confessing your sins, cutting its throat, having the animal sacrificed and some blood being taken in. But now on the Day of Atonement, the whole camp is being focused on and there is even an atonement for the holy place itself where all that blood has been sprinkled. Yes? Um, I just wanted to share an emphasis on verse 32 that I've never noticed. Okay, before. please stand up Karen so you can be heard. Huh? Um, it's verse 32, it's a picture of the Father and the Son that I've never quite seen before. It says, and the priest who is anointed and consecrated to minister as priest in his father's place wow. mm, mm. shall wow. make atonement and put on the linen clothes, the holy garments. Wow. Well, mm. well, at what point was it that was gripping you there, Karen? Just the son is ministering in the father's place. Oh, the son is ministering. That's powerful, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. The I appreciate that. I've not noticed that myself before either. Praise the Lord for that. The son is ministering in the father's place. Yes, a powerful statement. Powerful statement. Now we're getting into the real crux now of what happens on the day of atonement. And of course this has great significance to the Advent movement. Because we believe we are living in the time of the end. The time of the end. And so the activities of the most holy place are now of great interest to us. And the, the personal application of this, unfortunately, is going to have to come through. So you all let me tell a couple of stories. It's your fault, really. You know? no. <laughs> no, I've already told them. <laughs> and we're running out of time again, unfortunately. But I'm just wanting you to consider at the moment the priest and his household... the whole people of God and the tabernacle of the congregation, the holy place itself. Did they understand it? <laughs> I'd have to probably go to a higher authority to answer that. You know? <laughs> I'm not sure that much of the, sacrifice, the system of worship and sacrifices was understood fully by Israel. You know? yeah. In fact, there's every reason to suggest that they were starting to put their trust in animals. And thus, uh, I noticed that one of the high priests in, in Jerusalem was a news item recently, has recommended in the state of Israel that they now start offering animal sacrifices again on an altar right there on the Temple Mount where that Muslim mosque is now located. You know? That's an interesting spot there, by the way. That's the very spot where Abraham offered his son is the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And the rock that, that was there is still there. They've got a little barrier around it. I was there with my older son who's constantly getting embarrassed by me and goes and hides behind pillars as often as he can. But I crossed over the boundary and just lay down on the rock so that I could actually feel the rock 
And of course the guards came rushing and escorted me out of the mosque, you know. <laughs> My son was hiding behind a pillar and didn't know me at that point. But uh, I at least got to touch this rock <laughs> where Abraham had actually offered up his son. Yes, yes. Okay, so here we go. For those of you that have been raised in the Adventist church, you know, we kind of take this like we're supposed to know it for granted. We throw around words like atonement, right. okay. righteousness by faith, mm, 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 mm. I think it's important that we always go back to the basics. Because, thank you, but I heard the question back here, what does atonement mean? Okay. So we have to go back to what does that Excellent. Mean? Wow. I, I, Thank I you for raising that. <laughs> I love the statement, you know, that somebody, and I, for some of you have heard it, but at Tillman, if you look at it, it means at, at one, one man. with God. And then if you look at verse 26, it says, you shall afflict your souls. So there is a part that we have to search and see if there's anything in us. But then the good news comes for, from 30. It says, for on that day the priest, and remember, we forget that this whole thing for them was to point to Jesus. Yes. So who is this? That's priest? why this was a good question over here. Did they understand it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But do we understand it? And right. so this priest, well. it says, for on that day the priest, so we can substitute Jesus in there. It says, for on that day Jesus shall make atonement for you to cleanse you. But the good news is that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. So it's another reminder. There's nothing we can do wow. to cleanse ourselves because Jesus, wow. and there wow. it was the priest, he will do it for you. Wow. Yeah. You know, you should be teaching the word. I hope you are, huh? Because God's given you a beautiful gift. Praise yeah. the Lord, huh? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So just as in a nutshell now, triggered by this excellent comment, in a nutshell, let's just take one minute and ask ourselves, what was between us and God here? Here. Now don't give me a general answer now, nor call out. And here. What lay between us and God here, here, and here? Let's just spend two minutes. We're out of time, but I'm going to do this. It's so important. Two minutes. Turn quickly and ask your neighbour, what lay between God and us here that had to be dealt with? And if you're just saying sin, the ship has sailed and you're not on board... What lay between us and God here, here, and here? That's why there are three sections to the ministry of the sanctuary. Two minutes to discuss. Let's see who's taking advantage of this golden opportunity. I was looking at her very intense look of concentration. <laughs> I'm fascinated by that ability. <laughs> what lies between us and God in the courtyard, in the holy place, and in the most holy place? This will help you more than anything else. And thank you for triggering this question. This will help you come to an understanding of how God made at one meant. How God was able to reconcile you, to bring you back to a oneness with himself. Here, here, and here. And he's addressing three different aspects of sin. And hopefully you can identify those uh, before I let you go. This will be powerful. I'm, I'm going to be in trouble with the camp if we don't wrap up soon. You have to Oh, do we really? What time is the next meeting? Eleven. They want us to go back. Well, there has to be a Sabbath of rest in between, or it won't be. <laughs> three things associated with the three sections of the sanctuary. The courtyard, the holy place, and the most holy. They're all addressing three 
aspects of sin and they're all atoned for. God resolves these things and makes you at one with him in the process. I think it's our self-will, maybe. So in the courtyard, it's our actions. In the holy place, it's our thoughts. And in the most holy place, it'd be our character. All right, you're not really on first base yet. Oh, I'm, I'm on my own ball field. I know, but <laughs> you have a team here to keep you in track. I got excited. Rain her in. Come on, rain her in. Nothing wrong with the things she said, but she hasn't fitted them into the right slots. Come on, help her talk it out. <laughs> things are getting out of hand here, are they? Yeah. I, saw, I, saw, I saw Jesus in all three places. You say but that's three. not what separates us from God. He's the one who makes us at one with God. You know? Mm. Mm -hmm. Philosophical looking pair here, look at you. <laughs> this is the best question I've come up with in years. Oh, this is great. This is a good question, man. This will clarify. Yeah, I think so. Yep, yep. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. This is coming through loud and clear, but this question will resolve it if it comes out. Good work from you guys. I'm very pleased. I don't know if you'll be pleased with this. One. No, this is a, this is a tough assignment. But if this comes out, the whole issue will break open. Okay, so what was the question again, just with us? What is it that separates you from God in each of the three sections? That'll help us to understand how Jesus became the at one meant the atonement. How it separates us. I'm going to repeat the question again. Listen carefully, I'm going to repeat the question again. I probably should say it in half a dozen different languages to make sure you get it, you know? <laughs> this is a huge question, huge. And if this comes through, and I'm indebted to this group at the back over here for triggering this, if you can identify what separates us from God here, in the courtyard, what separates us from God here in the place of daily ministry and what separates us from God here in the most holy place, you will understand what Jesus needed to do to bring about at one meant here, at one meant here, and at one meant or atonement here. We're looking now at the whole ministry of Jesus. And why he did what he did. And the only way to understand this is to see what was causing the separation between God and man here. And here and here. Do you need more time? We need a Go ahead. We could give you overnight on this. If no, I'm not telling you. I never tell. I can't believe you asked me that. <laughs> I have even walked away from seminars without telling the answer. You know? <laughs> so it doesn't have to be three separate things. They are three separate they things. They are three yeah. separate things. Yeah. One for each one. All relating to sin, however. Emmy, you've been far too quiet today. We're more accustomed to you popping up. <laughs> it's like a first base answer. It's at least you're on base, you know. <laughs> 
Did you guys read enough to get a handle on? Yeah, we did. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you very good. much. Praise the Lord, man. <laughs> I think I'll leave this till tomorrow. This will heighten the excitement. <laughs> I do have a wicked streak in me. <laughs> Maybe I planned all along to leave this till tomorrow. <laughs> I'm the kind of person who does nothing by accident. This one is for you. That other one was for your Well, the other one was for my friend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I wrote a little note on the back. Oh good, thank you. I know, I, I, looked, I looked you up. <laughs> oh well, how noble of you. Was it a list of sins or accomplishments? <laughs> no, I've seen some of those online. Did you have, you know what I was wondering? Okay, yeah. And the, the ABC store was pretty mad at you for mentioning a book. For oh I know, book. they asked me in advance to identify yeah. any books and I forgot I was going to be using that book. There you were know? only two. They were hey young lady, what's thank up? You. Ask. Where the and you four, shall receive. Oh. four clipboards oh. are, and tell them that if they have not received. Now these clipboards are going to be names that receive email extra time in heaven, or what? What's yes. the reward? Yes, yes. Email that. notification of where you're going to be. Okay. Okay. This is the answer. All right. Listen carefully. Please. Listen carefully, there's good news and bad news. The good news is if you've signed on one of those clipboards that are running around, you will receive email notifications of events that I'm involved in. That's for those of you especially, so where are those four clipboards by the way? Could you hold them up because Marty would like to run around and gather them. There's one up the back there I see. One over there. If you haven't signed the clipboard yet, please make sure you sign it before you leave. Because people have been asking me about contact. I'm going to put the ministry website up here, Creative, Creative Media Ministries. Dot .org and that also has on it uh, a schedule where you can see what's what's coming up huh any question on that if you're on the internet it's easy to go on and find these things but if you're not at least make sure you've got your name down on the clipboard because they will well then I don't know how they're going to notify you if you put yeah, your you need an email address even for that okay okay Any question on the, what I've just said? Uh, well, once again, have I attained crystal clarity? All right, secondly, unfortunately, we're going to have to hear the conclusion of the whole matter in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and I'm, I am truly going to lose sleep over the agony that you will all suffer over this. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the question again for those of you that really want to spend a sleepless night working this out. And if you come through in the morning and you have this together, we'll probably have to tie you down. You could be in danger of being raptured because <laughs> this will be a breakthrough. This is the most misunderstood issue in the Adventist church. You appreciate that, don't you? I have chosen this week to deal with issues that I'm realising are misunderstood and quite frankly not even believed by some people today. Yeah. But I happen to be more excited about these things than ever because I realise how important they are to the understanding of the ministry of Jesus and for the work of the sanctuary and for the great controversy which we will yet get into, the implications of that. So I'm trying to address, I'm even going to bring up the investigative judgment before we're done. Oh we're going to, I know, we need another week at least. <laughs> but if you guys could come together tomorrow with this totally in hand, that would be a tremendous development. I mean, tremendous development. 
Any question? Well, I didn't, I didn't restate it yet, did I? <laughs> Listen carefully while I restate it. Shh. Listen. Jesus has a three-fold ministry. That's why in scripture he's called prophet, priest, and king. The Holy Spirit also has a threefold ministry to convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. The threefold ministry of the Holy Spirit parallels the threefold ministry of Jesus because the Holy Spirit's total ministry is to make the things of Jesus real to us and in us. Amen. You know, I'm a great admirer of the Trinity because they don't blow their own trumpet. They are humble even though they rule the entire universe. When Jesus was on earth, he did not speak of himself. He pointed to the Father. Jesus leaves and the Holy Spirit comes and lo and behold... John 16 says he does not speak of himself, he speaks of Jesus. This is the Trinity. Could we learn much from this? Because we are too much about self, you know. And the triune God is all about others. And so the ministry of the Holy Spirit equals the ministry of Jesus. So Jesus has a threefold ministry. Da da, da da. Ta-da! <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> and secondly, listen very carefully. The threefold ministry of Jesus is triggered by the fact that sin has done terrible things to the human race. Sin has done something to the human race here. In fact, it precipitated the atoning death of Jesus. Sin has done something dreadful to the human race here and it has precipitated the magnificent daily ministry of Jesus. And sin has done something just so terrible here that it precipitates an act of judgment. And all I'm asking you to do this is an advanced question. This would be an advanced question even at the seminary by the way. This is an advanced question. So what has sin done to the human race here that triggered the death of Jesus? What has sin done to the human race here that triggered Jesus? I'm, I'm going to be giving something away if I say this. But it triggered Jesus to live an absolutely pure and holy life in sinful human flesh. And what has sin done to the human race here that it triggers an investigation of every event in our lives. What has sin done to the human race here? That's what I want you to come along totally prepared. We can wrap this up. We can finish our meeting in five minutes tomorrow if you guys are ready. It'll be in your hands whether we do that or not. We're you know? <laughs> she wants two weeks. <laughs> Is it crystal clear? Hang on, we've got a question here. Listen. I was just saying that's how Jesus is described as prophet, priest, and king because he has three aspects to his ministry. We repeat the Holy Spirit's ministry too. Well, you can find that in John 16. You can go there and read that description for yourself the threefold ministry of the Spirit. Okay, let's stand together as we conclude this morning, please. As they say down south, you guys done good. <laughs> let's bow our heads together as we conclude. Brother, would you close in prayer for us this morning? Oh, thank, thank you, you very much. Father. Thank you, our Father, for this privilege of hearing the nitty-gritty of our salvation. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day at camp eh? and a sleepless night tonight. <laughs> Blessings on you all. <laughs> this is so good cutting off at this moment. I, I see what it's doing to everybody. <laughs> there we go.